our 10 step strategy to approach any MCAT style passage. I think this is really important because it's impossible to know what questions you're gonna get, but if you know different, if you have a specific strategy, then it doesn't matter what question you're gonna get. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. You know, it, like everyone was saying, it doesn't really matter what the content of that passage is. If you know how to approach it, and if you know the strategies for answering those questions, you'll be able to be successful. So first, uh, you know, our first step in our 10-step strategy is content review with active learning. And what this really means is simply not just reading through, highlighting, but actually um, taking drawing visuals, having a conversation with someone about it, teaching someone else about it, because as we all know, and as research time and time has shown us that the best way to really retain and understand information is not just through passive learning, but active learning. In case you've never uh, seen any of our past events, my name is Beruz Momeni. I'm the CEO and founder here at BMO, and I have uh, several of our uh, admission experts here today that I'd like to introduce. Uh, firstly, I'd like to introduce Ronza, who is our Associate Director of Consulting and one of our uh, lead ad uh, admission experts. Uh, next is Deepa, who is uh, one of our uh, admission experts, uh, one of our lead admission experts, uh, actually, as well. And uh, last but certainly not least is uh, Kendra, who is also one of our lead admission experts. The second step is to read the passage carefully but don't get bogged down in the details because this will otherwise eat up a lot of your time. Read each word carefully, but if something is confusing, just highlight it and move on so you don't spend too much time on it. As a rule of thumb, take about five minutes or less uh, with each passage. You know what? I actually think one of the major things that gets people with a low score is this point, just running out of time, running out of time over and over again. But that comes, again, if you guys are just starting your MCAT prep, don't worry, because with practice, that's the whole point. We're trying to give you the tools. With practice, you could really uh, make your uh, progress from passage to passage a lot faster. And we've seen it with our students so many times. Yeah, and number three, highlight key phrases as you go that way it's really easy for you to reference back in the article or in the passage when you're going back and answering the questions. Uh, now, let me ask maybe, Deepa and Kendra, what was your personal strategy for, did you highlight, did you like, how did you go back to stuff or did you at all go back? You just keep going forward, forget, if I cannot get this, I'm just going to keep moving forward, I'm running out of time. I definitely I, use the highlight feature. Go ahead, Kendra. Um, yeah, I definitely did also use the highlight feature. Uh, one of the things that I would find is if I couldn't off the like right off the bat get the point of the sentence, I would highlight it, move on, make sure that I understood the rest of the sentences within a, a paragraph, and then go back to the highlighted feature. So again, we're going to give you lots of strategies. You have to keep playing with these and then see what works best for you. But these are things that we know work and have worked for some of our own consultants and a lot of our students. Perfect. So number four is note down the main point of each paragraph and passage as a whole. So obviously each paragraph of this passage will contribute to making a main point, right? So what you want to do is kind of summarize in your head what is the author trying to say in this paragraph and why does it matter? And if you can figure that out for each paragraph, the whole passage becomes very easy to understand. Number five is to read each question stem carefully and identify the question type. We'll go through the different question types uh, in the next couple slides, but for example, in the science sections, there's really only two types of questions. It's either passage-based, which means it comes from the passage, or discrete, which means it's prior science knowledge that you already know for having studied for the MCAT. And then for number six, return to the relevant passage section to find the answer, uh, which just means Obviously, this is for passage-based questions only. Go back to the passage to see if you can find uh, the portion of the passage that the question is referencing. And then this is, I think, really important. Before reading the answer choices, come up with your own answer. The MCAT questions can be really, really confusing um, in terms of how they're worded with the answers. So if you already have an idea in your head of what the right answer is, it becomes a lot easier to kind of match up your answer to whatever the answer choices are than getting tricked by what Mr. MCAT is trying to trick you into selecting. Totally. 
Yeah, so number eight is match your answer choice to one of the four given answer choices and pick the closest one. Um, and this is kind of what we were saying before, just pick the answer that you came up with in your head. Um, and if you don't know the answer within a minute, just flag the question and come back to it. If you spend too much time on one question, it eats into your time for the whole passage. And if you have 30 seconds or fewer left on the entire section, just pick a letter and move on because it's important to remember, I, you know, remember you don't get penalized for answering a question, but you definitely will get it wrong if you just don't select the answer at all. Very obvious choice, but again, a lot of students make that mistake here, just like to leave it com completely blank. At least you have 25% chance of getting it right. You might as well play the lottery if you cannot, you know, if you're running out of time. This is perfect time now. Okay, so do we, can we give something specific to our students in attendance that about NCAT cards? If it's not learning pre-med subjects, what is it? How can, okay, you're gonna give me this, you know, Shakespearean uh, passage that, you know, it doesn't even sound English, even though it's purest English you could get. How do I deal with that? Kendra, do you want to take over the seven step process? Yeah, for sure. So the seven step process is really quite simple and you'll see a lot of overlap with what Deepa had talked about previously with the 10 step process to uh, general MCAT questions. In general, though, there are just a few little tweaks that we can make to make it really specific to a car section. So the first step would be to understand the author's point of view. This is really important because if you do this immediately as you're going through the question, it'll help to make through the passage, sorry, it'll help to make all of the questions a lot easier for you to answer as you go through. That way you'll understand like, okay, the author is in uh, favor of this particular point or against a particular point, and you'll better be able to answer those questions that are typically related in some way to the author's opinion. Again, saving you time so you don't have to go back and reread the passage, eating up your precious time. Um, the second point would be to identify the question type. And so there's three question types. So first being foundations of comprehension, just being able to comprehend what is being said within the passage itself. The second being reasoning within the text. This is more of an analysis based question where typically you need a good grasp of comprehension first. And then this is where you can gather other things like does this piece of evidence help or hurt the author's main point? And then the third type would be reasoning beyond the text. And so this is again a different type of question in which you're actually taking your comprehension and your analysis and you're synthesizing to apply it to more of an external point. And so for example, if an author supports this main point, what other points might they also support based on what you've come up with? And so those are kind of the ways that we break down the three questions. Always being able to identify the question type immediately will help you in, again, being effective with your time and getting to that correct answer. The third thing would be to apply the right strategy for each question type. Um, the fourth thing, which kind of seems counterintuitive, but is really important for CARS, as we were talking about before, CARS is one of the only sections where you're not actually taking pre-existing course material or science knowledge for these questions. It's really important to just use the information that's given within the question itself and not draw on external sources of information that you might have, like perhaps you are uh, a Shakespeare, um, very, a very a well-versed person in Shakespeare knowledge. You don't want to draw on that. Just draw on what is focused on in the paragraph itself. Um, the next one would be to formulate your own answer prior to reading the options. And this helps because um, it allows you to collect your thoughts and really synthesize everything down into what you might answer if it was a written based question. That way you might be better to uh, better able to identify which option choice best sticks with what you have decided is the most appropriate answer. The seventh thing would be to eliminate obviously wrong answers. If you've ever taken any course or learned any strategies with multiple choice questions, this does really ring true for all of them. Go through the four options, strike out immediately what is completely wrong or completely opposite. Be very careful of double negatives uh, as well as descriptive words because they will try to trip you up on that. And then from there, you better be able to get it down to typically one or two different answers and then choose from there. And then the last one would be 
Again, don't spend too much time on each question. So typically you'll have between five to seven questions per passage. You have a total of 53 questions for this section. With 90 minutes total for a car section, this works out to approximately 10 minutes per passage, which will include your reading time. And so if you don't know, don't sweat it too much. We recommend again, you read the sentence a maximum of three times. If you're not getting it, move on. It's way better to choose an answer, play the risk game, and better allocate your time to answers and questions that you'll better be able to answer based on knowledge and truly understanding. There are going to be two types, and uh, they're humanities and social sciences. So humanities think philosophy, religion, art, ethics, um, social sciences, anthropology, economics, history. And uh, Kendra also touched up on the three types of questions. So just to recap that quickly, because once we get into a sample, we want you to actively work on it yourself. So foundations, again, is just about getting the main ideas and really um, comprehending what is going on in the paragraphs. Um, in terms of uh, reasoning within the text, abbreviated as R uh, WT, uh, this is essentially just applying um, uh, the dots and just analyzing and applying that analysis approach to the answers. And then last but certainly not least, reasoning beyond text, abbreviated as RBT, and that's uh, similar to what Kendra mentioned, is just taking what you've uh, learned from what the top, from what the author is discussing and applying it to future potential um, cases in which they would agree or disagree with a potential topic.